Okay, today we're going to do lesson 3-2, angles and parallel lines. There's a couple of content standards, geometry content standards. Uh, we're going to learn some definitions concerning parallel and perpendicular lines. And our mathematical practices are 1 and 3. Previously, we've named angle pairs formed by parallel lines and transversals. We're going to add to that today. We're going to use theorems to determine the relationships between specific pairs of angles, and we're going to use algebra to find angle measurements. There is no new vocabulary in this chapter. Postulate of corresponding angles, or the corresponding angles postulate. We're told that if there are two parallel lines, and notice this is marked parallel, so we're given that they're parallel and they're marked parallel. If they are cut by a transversal, then each pair of corresponding angles is congruent. So 1 and 3 is congruent, 2 and 4, 8 and 6, and 7 and 5. They are all congruent. In example 1, we're given two parallel lines, notice, they're marked. And we're told that the measure of angle 11 is 51. The measure of angle 15, we're to find the measure of angle 15 and tell which postulates or theorems are used. So it's like we're going to do a two-column proof without the word statement and reason above it. So our first statement, angle 15 is congruent to 11. 15 is congruent to 11 because of the corresponding angles postulate, which is the postulate we just learned about. We can say that the measurements are equal due to the definition of congruent angles. Measurement of angle 15 is equal to 51. We're substituting since measurement of angle 11 is 51, then 15 is 51. So the answer is that the measurement of angle 15 is 51. Let's look at another one. So we're told the measure of angle 11 is 51. Find the measure of angle 16 and tell which postulates or theorems we're using. So since we're talking about 16 and 15, we, can, we know that 16 and 15 are vertical angles, so they are congruent due to the vertical angles theorem. And that 15 and 11 are congruent due to the corresponding angles postulate. And we're saying that 16 is congruent to angle 11 due to the transitive property. Both these are e uh, congruent to 15, so they're congruent to each other. So transitive property of congruence. The measure of angle 16 is equal to the measurement of angle 11, definition of congruent angles. So the measurement of angle 16 is 51 through substitution. Time to check your progress. We are given the figure that A and B are parallel, so it is given to us, and that the measurement of angle 18 is 42 we're to find the measurement of angle 22. So pause the video, do the work, and then come back. So 18 and 22 are corresponding angles, so they have the exact same measure. Good job. So in, figure, in this figure, A and B are parallel. It's given, so we can use those theorems we were talking about. The measure of angle 18 is 42, find the measure of 25. So pause the video and then do the work, come back and check your answer. 42, very good. So we're looking at 18 and 25. They've got the same measurement. Now we've got the uh, parallel lines and angle pairs theorems. So if we've got two parallel lines, notice all these are marked parallel, and we've got a transversal. These theorems only work if we've got parallel lines that are either given, mark, given that they're parallel or they're marked parallel. We can't just assume that it has to be marked or given. If two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. Each pair of consecutive interior angles are supplementary and each pair of alternate exterior angles is congruent. Okay, we've got a proof of the interior angles theorem. Since postulates are accepted without proof, you can use the corresponding angles postulate to prove each of those theorems that we just had above. OK, 
Okay, so we are given that A and B are parallel and that T is a transversal and we are to prove that 4 is congruent to 5 and 3 is congruent to 6. So we've got some alternate interior angles. So we're going to use the corresponding angles postulate and we know that corresponding angles are congruent so 2 is congruent to angle 4 and angle 6 is congruent to angle 8. Also, we know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 8 is congruent to angle 3 because the vertical angles are congruent. Therefore, angle 5 is congruent to angle 4 and angle 3 is congruent to angle 6 since congruence of angles is transitive. Let's look at real world example 2. Oh, look at there. We're given several line, uh, parallel lines. The diagram represents floor tiles in Michelle's house. The measurement of angle 2 is equal to 125. Find the measurement of angle 3. So 2 and 3 are alternate interior angles, so we're going to use the alternate interior angles theorem to say that they're congruent to each other. If they're congruent, then their measures are equal by definition of congruent angles. And since the measurement of angle 2 is 125, then we're going to substitute the measurement of angle 3 is equal to 125. Time to check your progress. So pause for a moment and study this uh, diagram and then find out what the measurement of angle 4 might be. The answer is B, 55, because the measurement of angle 2 is equal to the measurement of angle 3. They're alternate interior angles. And the measurement of angle 3 plus the measurement of angle 4 is equal to 180. So 125 plus the measurement of angle 4 is equal to 180. Solve for the measurement of angle 4, we get 55. Okay, now we're going to be finding the values of some variables. There's a, the special relationships between the angles formed by two parallel lines and a transversal can be used to find unknown values. But you can only use those special theorems if they're marked. You cannot assume that they're parallel unless they're marked or it's given. So we're given that the measurement of angle 5 is 2x minus 10. The measurement of angle 7 is x plus 15. We're to find x. 5 and 7 are corresponding angles, so we can say that they're congruent due to the corresponding angles postulate. They're equal due to the definition, their measures are equal due to the definition of congruent angles. We simply substitute in so we can solve for x. Subtract x from each side, add 10 to each side x is equal to 25. We are to find x, not the measurement of the angles. So we did very well there. How about the next one? Measurement of angle 4 is 4 times y minus 25 and 8 is 4y. Find y. Well we know that 8 is congruent to 6 because they're corresponding angles postulate. Their measures are equal due to the definition of congruent angles. Then we substitute in Measurement of angle 8 is 4y. Measurement of angle 6 plus 4 is 180. So since 6 is 4y and we know the measurement of angle 4, we just start solving. Use distributive property, add 100 to each side, divide both sides by 8. So y is equal to 35. Time for you to check your progress. So pause the video for a moment and study this, and then come back and select your answer. Did you get x is equal to 12? We could solve that by saying that 9x plus 6, the measurement of angle 1, is 9x plus 6, and that is equal to the measurement of angle 2, 10x minus 6. So when we solve for x, we get x is equal to 12. How about this one? Pause for a moment and work the problem, and then come back and check your answer. Well, earlier we'd found that x is 12, so we can substitute in to this one. Solve for x, we end up getting that, we're going to end up with 120 minus 6 is equal to 114. So 5y plus 14 is equal to 114. We solve for y, y is equal to 20. There is a special relationship that exists when the transversal of two parallel lines is a perpendicular line. So here we have two parallel lines and this line that intersects them, this transversal, forms perpendicular lines. 
It's the perpendicular transversal theorem that says in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one or uh, one of two per parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. And please note that this symbol means perpendicular. Okay, so if you see that, this symbol means parallel, this one's perpendicular. So this says if we've got two parallel lines, if the transversal is perpendicular to one of them, it is perpendicular to the other. Very well. You are ready to begin the exercises.